Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 timers and how to use them in the Arduino environment. The ESP32 have 1, 2, 3, 4, 64 bit timers with a 16 bit prescaler. The timer can count up or down, have an auto reload function, and also can be triggered on an edge or a level. But this makes only sense if you also combine the timer with a GPIO pin where you have an edge and falling or rising edge or both or you have a level with the ADC and the timers are organized in two groups group 0 for timer 0 and 1 and group 1 for timer 2 and 3. The timer works with timer ticks of 12.5 nanoseconds and the prescaler, the 16-bit prescaler decides how many of the ticks are counted in a 64-bit counter register. So if you have for example a prescaler of 10, you only count every 100 25 nanoseconds. And if you also set the alarm register values, then the timer can count up to the value of the alarm register or down. And if the two registers are equal, then a timer interrupt is thrown. And on the interrupt, you can also call your own function. And if we start to look at the Arduino code, we have our setup and loop function. And in addition, we have also a timer function that is called when the timer alarm is reached. And if we look at the basics of our timer setup, we first call a function called timer begin, where we set up our timer variable. Then we attach the timer to an interrupt. And this is when we call our own defined function. Then we set the alarm values where the interrupt is called and we enable our timer. And also important is that we tell the compiler that our function is called in an interrupt. So we also put in flag before the function that our own function is an interrupt function. And we need also the interrupt ram attribute. And if we also change some variables or ram that is needed outside our interrupt function, then we also need to enclose the critical block as shown here. And this is how we declare our timer variable and also the timer max variable. So let's start with a simple example. The setup routine, we initialize the serial interface, just put out a debug line. Then we initialize our timer zero and we use a prescale of 18. And this leads to a clock period of one microsecond and we just multiply 12.5 nanoseconds times our prescaler and 12.5 nanoseconds times 80 is 1000 nanoseconds or one microsecond. And we count up because our third parameter is true. And if we put here false, then we have an decreasing timer. And then we attach the interrupt routine to our on timer function like previously declared here and we set this to trigger on an edge and not on a level but this is totally arbitrary in this example then we set the alarm value and the alarm value is one million and one million times one microseconds is exact one second and we also set the auto reload to true and then last but not least we enable our timer and then the timer routine is called every second so let's upload our code to our esp server and let's see the output. So I open the serial monitor and press the reset button. So start timer and 
as we see every thousand milliseconds and this is exact every thousand milliseconds our on timer routine is called so if we change our example a little bit and just introduce a gpio pin on pin 16 and declare this as an output and write the digital pin to low on startup then we can use our timer routine just to switch between zero and one in some variable. And then we can use the digital write function to toggle between two states on our GPI opens. So we can turn maybe an LED on or off. And this is what we see exactly here on the breadboard. The LED is off at start, then it blinks at one second interval. So now we can change our example to use two timers and also use two timer interrupt functions to toggle between the states of two different GPIO pins. And we set up GPIO pin 16 and also 17. And then we start two timers, timer one, the beginning, and this is arbitrary. We can also use timer zero at the beginning or what have you. But we have to do at least the enable of both of the alarms. So we enable timer zero and also timer one. And then at 250 milliseconds and also at an interval of two seconds, our both LEDs are blinking independent of each other because the two timers are works independent. And this is the view on the breadboard with two blinking LEDs. First, we start with no LED and then both of the LEDs are blinking at different time speeds. And sure, this works also for three LEDs with three independent timers. So this time 250 milliseconds, one second and 750 milliseconds for the LEDs. And this is my breadboard setup for three LEDs that blinks in different time speeds. So now a little bit more advanced example and I assume that we want to change the interval of our timers. So we have maybe some phase of acceleration, then a phase of constant speed and also a phase of deceleration. And we can start by increasing or decreasing our timer by a constant value. Then our speed graph will look like this. And we see that at the start we have a relative wide phase of small steps of acceleration. Or if this fits better to our needs, we can also use an a linear acceleration or deceleration. And this will look like this graph. Or if we have enough computing power, we can also use the sinus function to calculate our acceleration. And this is a sinusoidal acceleration and deceleration. And this is the changing timer example with acceleration and deceleration and a constant speed phase. So at the setup, we see we have then the same setup as a simple timer and the loop is also nothing special. But in the on timer function, we have declared many things. So I start at this timer tick. So we have 500 milliseconds at the start timer interval. And I want to increase the speed to 20 milliseconds in different acceleration phases. And then we have a little constant phase with constant speed and then we decelerate and then we decelerate with the same function. So we also define a number of steps that we use to accelerate, decelerate and have our constant phase. So if you want to look at this example, see a little bit closer. Maybe I show you the first the acceleration 
acceleration phase. So the linear acceleration phase is calculated by this formula. This is the formula for the constant value changes of the phases and this is the formula for the sinusoidal acceleration and the same for the deceleration the or ramp down phase this is our formula for the ramping down or this one or this one for a comparison and then if we reach the maximum steps then we start again by the start timer ticks and Last but not least, we just calculate for debug output the velocity of the three curves and then we print them out just on the screen to put them on a graph with the Arduino plotter. So let's upload our code and let's see what's on the plotter. So I start the serial plotter tool and we can now see the comparison of the two changing phases. So this is our three acceleration phases, then we have a constant velocity phase and we decelerate again. And so this repeats over and over again. So this time we have a bit bigger look. So we decreasing in our speed and the plotting is slowed down and now the we ramping up and this plotting is also faster. And now ramp down ramp up and plot 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 so thanks for watching today i hope you have fun with the video and also learn something i wish you a nice day see you next time and bye bye